A little while back, a young lady in the group asked Ron for a new anime to watch. And while there were plenty of suggestions in the comments, including myself recommending We Never Learn, I've been regretting that recommendation ever since. Now don't get me wrong, We Never Learn is an amazing show, but I had an even better show in mind. <laughs> High School Girl is a slice of life anime which doubles as an ode to the video game renaissance of the 90s. Now the 90s was an incredible decade for video games after the video game crash of the 80s, with Street Fighter 2 in its many iterations, Darkstalkers and Mortal Kombat leading to the rise of the home console. It was truly a great time for gamers far and wide. Now the story revolves around Yaguchi Haruo and Akira Ono, with their rivalry, their friendship, and maybe even something more. The pair first meet in 1991, as they are in the same class in elementary school. Haruo is the class labeled Degenerate due to his complete devotion to video games, but to be fair, that label isn't too far from the truth. Ono is this perfect girl who comes from a wealthy family, has great grades, is the class idol, and you know, everything else an anime girl from rich family can do. Now imagine Haruo's shock and surprise when he sees Ono in an arcade and she's better than him. She shouldn't even be in an arcade. I mean, look at her. Does she scream gamer to you? Ono kicks Haruo's ass multiple times in Street Fighter 2 on her way to a 29 game win streak. But Haruo gets his revenge using some underhanded tactics, but he gets his ass kicked in real life as a consequence of his actions. What are you? What are you kids doing? Since then, our fates have been intertwined. High school girls' characters come in all shapes and sizes, with their own unique characteristics. With Harwell's mother pulling off a German suplex that would make Brock Lesnar smile, to Ono chauffeur slash butler, who has a heart of gold but also a pachinko addiction. But more on them later. Haruo Yaguchi at first glance doesn't look like much, like a lot of slice of life protagonists, but I would argue he's a lot more developed than most when we first meet him. He already knows who he is, what he likes, and what he wants for his future. Sure it involves video games, but you get the point. It's so heartwarming to watch him geek out on the new games that are coming out, his hilarious commentary on the people who make up the arcade culture of that time, and his genuine interaction with his peers that just make you smile. To be honest with you, you can kind of tell where his life is going to go. He's going to be a lifelong gamer who eventually has to get a terrible job and will probably hate it due to him not taking his studies seriously when he was in school. Haro really is a man out of time. I mean, his dream is to be a professional gamer, but that's not really possible in the 90s. At least not like today where becoming a pro gamer can be a viable way to make a living. Obviously this is just conjecture on my part, but the reason I say this is because of Haruo himself. His uncompromising way of life, not being ashamed of what he loves, and eventually this endears him to the people around him. His life all things considered is pretty good. However, his life trajectory changes the more and more he interacts with Ono. Ono Akira is the youngest daughter of the prestigious Ono family tasked with carrying all the familial responsibilities after her older sister gave them up. She is good at everything she does, whether it is studying, drawing, music, and martial arts. However, this means her life is extremely hectic, and we all know the old saying, all work and no play makes Ono a dull girl. Then she discovers video games, and they become her escape from her unbearable world. So from time to time, she sneaks off to the arcade for some rest and relaxation, and it is there she meets Haruo. Despite a terrible first impression, Haruo is a breath of fresh air for Ono. Someone who actually encourages her to live her life her way, and this means so much to her. Due to their shared interests, our two protagonists grow rather close, which is amazing due to Ono's biggest quality as a character. Ono doesn't talk. 
No, I'm not saying she's one of those silent characters who only say things at critical moments. I'm saying Ono doesn't talk. Like, at all. For the entire two-season run of High School Girl, Ono never says a word. And how the show handles this is incredible to me. The best way to describe their effect on each other is to just show you by looking at episode 3 of the show. So, uh, spoilers I guess. The episode starts off innocently enough with Haruo joining Ono and a few classmates at an amusement park near the end of their summer vacation. Eventually, Haruo and Ono dish the rest of the group to go to the game corner. Now what really makes this interaction different from everything else we've seen so far is Ono's behavior. She's not acting like her usual self. All the games she wants to play are all co-op games, and she even stops Haruo from rejoining the rest of the group. It turns out Ono has never been to an amusement park before, but you get the feeling that it's more than that. However, Haruo doesn't pick up on this feeling and decides to spend the rest of the day with her enjoying all the amusement park has to offer, including a heart racing moment where they almost ride the ferris wheel together. When they go back to school, it is revealed that Ono is moving to Los Angeles, and Haruo, like everyone else, is shocked by the news. At the going away party for Ono, Haruo is the only one who doesn't get Ono a present, and puts on his best tsundere act to show that he won't be affected by her leaving. School then ends, and our pair go their separate ways, with Ono going to the airport, and Haruo going to the arcade, with the money his mother gave him to buy her a present. He has this deep introspection and reflects on how he used to love playing games by himself, but now whenever he goes to the arcades, he looks for her. He acknowledges her skills and proclaims her as his ultimate rival. And for the first time in his life, he found a real companion. After a pep talk from Street Fighter 2's Guile of all people, he heads to the airport to go see her, which leads into one of the best and most heartbreaking moments of the whole show. Uh, hey there, Ono. SNK is gonna release a new fighting game called Fatal Fury soon. With Street Fighter 2 being so popular, I knew they'd make another fighting game. And if I'm right, the arcades are gonna get even more fired up. I'm sure they're going to release stuff that we can't possibly imagine. Going away at a time like this is so unfortunate. When I think about a strong rival just disappearing, I can't help but feel sad. My mom gave me 1,000 yen and told me to buy you something. But I used it all on the train fare getting here. And if I bought a ticket to get back home, I wouldn't have enough to buy you anything. This is from the arcade we went to together, from the crane game at Gashadokuro. I thought I'd give it to my mom on Mother's Day, and so I hid it in my wallet. This thing, it, it might seem kind of stupid, and even creepy in a lot of ways, but right now it's all that I'm able to give you! Will you accept this from me? It was weird to see Ono with this much emotion. You can see the pain on her face as she realizes that her time with Haruo is truly over. From the time they went to the 10 yen arcade, when she played on a home console for the first time, even the time as a way to escape the rain, they played their first cooperative game together. It was all over. And all she has left to remember these times is the plastic ring Haruo gives her as she leaves, never knowing if they're ever going to see each other again.
I wouldn't be doing my job here if I didn't mention the third player in our story. But first, let me set the stage. A couple of years have passed since Ono left for Los Angeles. Harwo is now in his second year of middle school, and he's still up to his degenerate ways. We are then introduced to Hidaka Koharu. Hidaka is the daughter of a convenience store owner and is kind, polite, generally a good if not boring person to interact with. However, that description completely undermines her importance to the story. I would compare her to Ami from Toradora. Both characters are so vital to their individual stories that I cannot even imagine how both stories would play out without them. In my opinion, Hiraka is the most realistic character in the whole show. When you first meet her, you will see that she's in the same class as Haruo. One day after school, Haruo has to run away from an arcade to avoid being caught by their school instructor. Hiraka watches all this unfold and admits how envious she is of him to be able to live such a carefree life. Her daily life would consist of basically nothing but studying, watching TV dramas with her mom, and helping out with the store. By her own admission, she doesn't really know how to have fun. When she gets home, she sees her father install a few arcade machines outside the store to attract more customers, and in the future, as fate would have it, a certain gaming obsessed boy we know. Through a few encounters with Haruo, Hiraka is introduced to the world of gaming and immediately takes a liking to it. What I love most about her is how she completely affects the show. She takes the focus completely off Haruo and now we hear her inner thoughts, what she thinks of situations and of Haruo himself, and she is a big part of the second arc of the show. We watch her struggle to understand this weird guy she talks to every day and why he loves video games so much. It is through these interactions we watch her love for video games grow, as well as her feelings for Harwo as well. Instead of the one-sided conversations we have grown accustomed to with Harwo and Ono, Harwo and Hidaka's conversations are a really nice change of pace. Her character growth is clearly shown in her gaming skills, where she starts out just enjoying watching Harwo play, to eventually playing beside him, and even at some point surpassing him all while becoming more confident in herself and continually striving for what she wants most in her life. Hideko really puts our boy Haruo in perspective and offers us a look at him that Ono could never give us. Despite all his faults, and trust me, he has plenty, including his unapologetic one-track gaming mind, which even puts somebody like me to shame, which works really as a unique take on the incredibly dense romance protagonist trope that we've all grown accustomed to, her feelings for him continue to grow. Although they will not remain unchallenged for long, especially after a certain someone returns to Japan. Now I've been waxing poetically about High School Girl for about 15 minutes, but by no means is this show perfect. Three problems in particular really stick out to me. Number one is the show's cast of characters, and while our main characters are great, the side characters do not have that luxury. My favorite genre in anime is Slice of Life, and while watching these shows, I really pay attention to how the side characters are used, because more often than not, they can kind of make or break the show for me. I know it's dumb to do this, but I just can't let it go. Remember when I mentioned the two side characters earlier in the video, Haruo's mother Naime, and Ono's personal driver Gia. Unfortunately, those are the only two good side characters in my opinion. The rest of the side characters are either really forgettable, underutilized, or extremely annoying. Emphasis on the annoying part. Especially when I compared this show to a show like Horimiya, which at points has such a heavy focus on its side characters that the show can put its two main characters on the back burner for a while and it's not a problem. Number two is the show's animation quality. We can get downright piss poor at times. The show is a pretty extensive mix of CGI and hand-drawn animation. Now using CGI and anime can be pretty hit or miss depending on the show, especially right now, let alone back in 2018 when the show began streaming on Netflix. I'm no expert in animation, but I'd like to think that I know bad animation when I see it. And number three is a secret. 
I know, I know I'm being a bit cheeky here, but I'm actually trying to have you watch the show. And if I tell you this last one, I have a feeling you won't actually watch it. But I will say this. You will know it when you see it. And I can't wait to discuss it with you in the group. So please forgive me here. To basically sum up this entire video in a couple minutes and completely undermine all the work I put into this video, High School Girl is a unique coming of age tale where three people from opposite worlds come together and bond over video games, find love, and see there is more to life than they ever knew. For those of you in the group that know me, I really got into anime during the pandemic, but High School Girl is one of the few shows that predates that time. Now I'm not going to lie. This was made for gamers, and you can count me in that group. And for all those 80s and 90s babies who were active in the arcade scene. Despite the heavy video game presence and premise, High School Girl handles its romantic and emotional moments with a surprising level of care. And even though it has a bland cast of characters, there are some great standouts. I also would like to apologize to all the sub periods out here in the group. At certain points of the video, I used the actual English dub parts of the show to get some of my points across, and I know that some of you were feeling some type of way. You think I'm gonna be sick? As I have said before, High School Girl is one of the shows that I watched before I became an anime lover, or weeb, if I use the technical term. But before I made this video, I never watched the sub version of the anime, and it didn't feel right using the sub version of the show as some of my examples. While I don't really care about either side in the sub versus dub debate, what? What? I wanted to apologize nonetheless. In conclusion, I recommend this show to you because I'm a sucker for good romance, especially in anime. And through the various anime I've watched, I can realistically count on one hand how many of them tell such a unique and gripping love story as High School Girl. But I also think I'm looking at this show through rose-colored glasses, so you can probably take that with a grain of salt. By the way, the show is readily available on Netflix for you to watch at any time. I know Netflix isn't the first place you would think of when it comes to great anime, but they've really been stepping their game up in the last few years. With popular titles such as One Piece, Naruto, Demon Slayer, Sword Art Online, Toradora, and so much more, to their own original series offerings like Beastars, Kakegurui, Violet Evergarden, Teasing Master Takagi-san, and... <sighs> Yasuke. I can honestly say, I was never more disappointed in an anime before. Yeah, this probably needs its own video. So if you're looking for a new anime to watch, whether you're a romance fan like me or you're just looking around, High School Girl may be up your alley. Okay, so, wow. I really can't believe I made a whole video about a question someone in the group asked a while ago. However, this wouldn't be the first time I've actually done that. I really hope you all liked it, and I can't believe there are people who make videos like this for a living. To be honest with you, this was a lot of fun to be able to make a video about an anime that I wholeheartedly love, but no one besides me talks about it, and I'm looking to change that. Also, I completely underestimated the prep work that goes into making a video like this. Plus, I can't wait for someone to watch this video and tear it apart telling me where I was wrong and all that, but I didn't make this video for anyone's approval. Either way, I don't think I'm out of the woods yet because I want to make a video like this one more time for Mashoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation. The first season of the show already aired earlier this year and the second season is getting ready to come out here in a few weeks. Mashoku Tensei may literally be the father of all isekai, with its web novel being written all the way back in 2012. And the more I think about it, it may be my favorite anime of all time. I have never enjoyed anything in the anime world as much as I have Mashoku Tensei, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Thank you all for watching.